a sermon topic that I may know him. But then um, there's not much to say. Um, that's what I think. But to, so the my sermon topic today is the efficacy of Christ. E F F I C A C Y. The efficacy of Christ, which only means the power to produce effects. Amen? Amen. The efficacy of Christ. This is what it means. To produce the power. Power to produce effects. Amen? Amen. And it, co it, it covers four main areas. The gospel, prayer, medicine, the right medicine, and um, fertilizing. And I'm not going to go through all of it. I'm just going to touch it. We know about the gospel. We are the back gospel lead us to salvation. Amen? Amen? And life eternal. And we know that prayer is a connection between us and Christ. Amen? Amen. We know that the right medicine heals. Amen? Amen? And we also know that Jesus Christ is the mighty healer. Amen? Amen? Amen. But we also know that they use something that is called manure. Mm -hmm. Amen? that fertilize the land, that cause all these nice tomatoes and stuff that we eat. So this is the four years, and I'm just touching them briefly. And then we're gonna go on, because I do not want to belong. The efficacy of Christ, amen? amen. You know, I, 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 I admire some of our young people when they talk about Jesus, they talk, they talk about him with a passion. And we watch Christ went to the cross, amen? Whether we watch or we were told or we read it. You know, it is a scene to behold in your normal mind when you think about it. When he said we should think about the judgment scene at least five minutes each day. Or probably even more if you have the mind to really hold it. Many times we have our mind can hold it uh, more than even 20 seconds. Our scripture reading this morning tells us about the Father and the Son and their power. I wonder if somebody hearing me today No normal power. Amen. We have never lost a battle. Something that we have heard over and over again. Amen. Amen. Uh, we, this week, last week, we were talking about sisters. We were talking about the east wind. When the, when the Lord touched Jonah, it says that Jonah feared and wanted to die. When the east wind touched Jonah, he, he mashed up his head. He couldn't understand the power of God, and he was a priest. We were told about the as we well, the tree caption that we use. And we, it was more than true use because we, we, we talk about Job and the East Wind. We also talk about no um about Moses huh? and two occasions and he, he witnessed, and probably there are more than two. He witnessed the East Wind in Egypt when God was telling Pharaoh to let his people go. Come on now, Joel. The East Wind. Yes, Joel. The Lord was telling him, if your people want to worship. They have to let them go, and they didn't want to. He sent them ten plagues. One of them carried the east wind. He said, all day and all night the east wind blow, and when it finished, the locusts came. Come on, Joel. And everything clean, because God people must be worshipped. Must go and worship him. Amen. And so this is what it is all about. We know that's what it's going to boil down to. And this is why I, I'm speaking on such a spectrum, really, for us to understand that we are all covered here under the third angel's message. Amen. Fear God and give glory to Him. Fear God and worship Him. Amen. Nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. And it tells us in Matthew 4, verse 4, what Christ says when He was tempted of the devil. Mm -hmm. Man shall not live by bread alone, amen, yeah. Yeah. but by every word Words. that proceeded oh, out of the mouth of God. God. The efficacy amen. of amen. Christ, Praise the God. power to produce effects, mm -hmm. and that power to produce effects come by obedience to him. Amen. 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 The Holy Scriptures advises us to know God, and the emphasis appeal to our hearts if we know Christ we will know the Father Amen. the difficulty I believe is how we program we program our access the information received I say there are three topics there are three topics I believe lead us to to doubt because we are afraid to accept the understanding and the power of God
that's why it leads us to do. And we are not afraid on our own as I wrote, but because the devil has poisoned our soul. And that flame that is attached to our mind is led to believe. And led us to believe that it will go out. Listen to me here today. It's not going to go out if you stay in Christ. Amen? Amen. It will only go out when you go on your own understanding. He said that we should not lean on our own understanding in all our ways. Not some. In all our ways, acknowledge the Lord and He will direct our path. I, I always imagine that like most of people, oh, I'm going to acknowledge the Lord in everything I do. It is a very beautiful process because it brings us to prayer, which leads us to the right medicine and allows us to grow with the right manure. Amen? Amen. Come from God. You know, one of, one of the things is that the, um, the, the Christian textbook is the Bible. Amen? And, and, and as I have said a while ago, it is a divine law that blessing comes at some cost to the receiver. And this is most of the time we, we, you know, we, we think that we, we're not going to feel any pain. And that's why we're talking so this morning about, about Christ. The death spot upon him. And he's, he bear it. They call him names. You know, one of the most painful memories in, in, in my mind is that they put thorns, not like these little roses thorn that you, you break off in your finger. This couldn't break off. And they put it on his head for a crown and he did that. You wear it for you and I. For you and I. You know, the, 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 the problem is, it says that he could have called 10,000 angels and just destroy everything in his path. Mm -hmm. But he didn't. He shows that he could actually bear it. He could actually go it. And so he, we see, you know, the blessing today comes to us. So we have to really feel something too. Amen? Amen. We have to feel something too. You know, so as, as the scripture reading leads us, Today, about this, verse 21 says, So far as the Father riseth up the dead, or raiseth up the dead, and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. You know, I was telling, uh, I read a story from the Pen of Inspiration, and I was telling my wife, that um, Wesley was on a mission to America, but on the ship that he was traveling were Moravians, Christians. And when they reached out at sea, in fact, we have read this story already, but just, just give me a little listening here. Probably I might not even say it verbatim. It says that Wesley, Wesley was John, he and his brother. They, they become agitated because it, it seems like they're going to die because of the weather that is threatening them. And at one occasion, it says that the ship was swallowed by the water and all and, and dropped on the deck. But the, the Moravians hold on still, and, it, and there was a lot of screaming by the other people, including Wesley. Hmm. But the Moravians were quiet. And after all was done, Wesley, John Wesley went up to the so-called leader of the Moravians and said, were you not afraid? And he said, let no. And that was bewilderment for, for Wesley. Mm -hmm. How could you not be afraid? No, Wesley and his brother, they were the pumping of the day. They were the one who was really pushing the gospel. There were Moravians, were people, you know, they were probably Methodists. They were the new found religion and they were not going anywhere, so to speak. But they were claimed to have the fire. But the Moravians was humble. Then Wesley recognized something that not even the children or the, or, or the wives scream out or cry. So he said, But what about your children? Were that and your wives? Were they not afraid? He said, No, they were not afraid. The problem is that we are we are afraid to die. I wonder if you hear me. The problem is that we are afraid to die. We want all these things from the Lord. But we will not even stand up. Scripture tells us we, are, we have not even strive unto blood yet. In the book of Hebrews. I think Hebrews 12. 
Today we are talking about the efficacy of Christ. And um, today I didn't really print much, really. I didn't really print, I, so I asked not much to print. But I went to the manuscript and I pulled something out from the manuscript. Manuscript 14, chapter 20. And this is what it says. I call upon God's people to open their eyes. When you sanction or carry out the decisions of men, who, as you know, are not in harmony with truth and righteousness, you weaken your own faith and lessen your relish for communion with God. Can I say that again? Brother Fitzgerald is saying to us, I call upon God's people to open their eyes. When you sanction or carry out the decision of men who, as you know, are not in harmony with truth and righteousness, you weaken your own faith and lessen your relish for communion with God. And I was saying it, and I'm going to say it again until you can tell me, brother Francis, don't say it. I prove to me that I shouldn't say it. Do not go around and tell people the same day I've been that tell people you don't have any faith. Stop it. Stop it. You're a believer, you have faith. Amen? Stop it. Don't do it no more. If you are doing it, stop. You need to exercise what you have. Amen. I know that something Amen. comes through the power of prayer. Once you connect with the most holy place, in the faintest way, God will work. I know this. Amen. And many here know that too. All of us know this. Oh, yes. Amen. It says here, you seem to hear the voice which was addressed to Joshua. Come on. Wherefore liest thou dust upon thy face? Israel had sinned, and they have also transgressed. My covenant which I can commanded them. There is an accursed thing in the midst of thee. How did I read this? O Israel, neither will, will I be with you anymore except he destroy the curse from among you. Christ declares, he that guarded not with me scatter it abroad. I think it was Wednesday night on our way home, um, Sister P and um, Sister Del, Sister P used the word that it was describing about AI. They look and say, well, then listen, it's just a few of them. So it, we don't have to send thousands. Just we will defeat them. And AI whip them. People die that day. Our children can understand that they cannot defeat AI. Uh, I know they understand me now when I use the word AI because it's a first word. You cannot defeat art artificial intelligence. You can't. You cannot. You cannot defeat. You might win a two or three game or you might get a lot of numbers. But that computer screen, that artificial intelligence that you have, we you call it games, it is here to defeat you. And unless you obey the word of God, you will be scattered from him. I wonder if I'm talking to somebody too. Mm -hmm. Amen. It is in the scripture, AI. And today, how fitting it is for these people to be talking about artificial intelligence. That they are telling you that they're going to use artificial intelligence to tell you what kind of sickness you have. They begin to do it already. They are using artificial intelligence to operate with you on a robot. And you, children, you, you young men know more than what even I'm saying. They are using artificial intelligence as we speak to do what? Access the future. But when you read about Joshua, it is an accursed thing. AI, they lean on their own understanding to defeat AI. And that's what many of us do. I used to like to play Angry Birds. I don't even go near them thing anymore. Because all the devil want to have is a switch. Forget about it. And that's what they use and play up on our mind. I always say that they, the, the colors on those TV screens, they're not ordinary colors. They mix no, them up in order for them to poison your mind. Poison your mind away to kill the part about God. Amen? Amen. The scientists, I didn't say this. And you can go and and, and check it out. 
for yourself. The scientist says that when you pray about God, something happened to your brain. That the scientists at that time could not understand why that part of the brain moved. The colors kill that part of the brain, my friends. The colors on the screen numb that part of the brain. And you, I don't want you to try it out, um, adults. But in case you want, you better pray up first if you're going to do it. Because when you go and do it, you know, you, you might never come back anyway. But I'm saying, when that part is dead or numb, you will even curse. We sit down before that big one like Cyclops. There's a lot of things he does to people. You're a good Christian cuss. Eh? Let them watch a movie and the, the, the anticipation or the excitement catch them. They, ah! The children are looking, Mommy, Daddy, what's going on? It just happened. It just happened, but that's what the color do to your brain. It numbs your brain. And you can do your own research and it will show you. They become so wicked with this AI stuff that they put a, a, a camera in every TV to watch how you react when you watch certain movies. And when you play so much game that they can actually multiply on it to accept, you know, you know, we have kids now begin to faint at such a point when they reach a point. Nobody else is around them. Even though the subway might be full and they're going on the game, they're cursing, they're doing, they don't, they don't speak at them, they bring them into a a, a, a little, they put, they bring him into the sepulchre. They are all here laying down by themselves. Sometimes when, when, when they um, when the phone or whatever device they're using, battery done, they just fling it down on the ground. They had paid good money for it, or actually even curse, and even sometimes come off before they stop. We are talking about the efficacy of Christ. Only Him alone will give you the power overcome. Amen? Amen? Overcome. He said the admonition to search the scripture was never more appropriate than at the present time. The admonition to search the scriptures was never more appropriate than at the present time. This is an age of unrest. And the youth drink deeply of its spirit This is an, an age of unrest for our children, our youth. And they are drinking it deeply. The spirit of what is happening on them, that's what they're drinking up. Who oh, that they could be made to realize the importance and the peril of the position they occupy. Never were such momentous issues before any generation as a way the one now coming up on the stage of action. I beg and joy I talk to you today. Study the scriptures. Forget about Amen. everything else. Amen. He said, you just search the scriptures. Find them he think you have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. John 5.39 in the very place where we are. Amen. It is a, it is a tough time for our youths. Never were the youth of any age or country so earnestly observed by the angels of God are as are the youth of today. I wonder if somebody hearing me today. Amen. The angels are watching our youth today. So if you make up your mind to go run Ibeck, you make sure say, you can't run too far because angels have a thing to do. The watchers are saying, well, no man. Sister Clover and Brother Francis spend a lot on Ibeck. Let's see if we can break a leg. Uh -huh. Or take out a high bar and make him run go back home. <laughs> I wonder if we're hearing. Mm -hmm. And it's not only right youth. Because none of us know how long we will live too. Man. How many times we decide that we want to screech it and go do something to satisfy self. Uh -huh. And things is going to happen. It says that not only the angels are looking, but they are earnestly observing. 
Amen. Earnestly observe it. All heaven is watching with intense interest for every indication of the characters they are farming. Whatever character you're farming. The, it, the, the all heaven watching. Because this is the final generation. Whether <laughs> when brought to the test, they will stand firm before God and the right or be swayed by worldly influences. And we know when we are swayed by worldly influences, you're going to get punishment. You want to know a little thing? Take some time out of your time and come and ask me the punishment that I received when I walked away. Sleepless night. <coughs> And more but this is not about me I'm just giving a little part of my testimony because the efficacy of Christ is really divinely awesome amen if you think about somebody who died for you and go back to the Christian scripture reading and say that what he had in him you will understand that it was nothing normal he said they gave him 40 lashes, they wanted to give him 39. And we asked ourselves, why? He, they wanted to kill him before he went to the cross. Or, probably, when we read scripture, after he gets such a large scourge, why would you want him to be still crucified? Sister Del said, and it is written, the devil was doing everything to prevent him from going to the cross. Yeah. The efficacy of Christ. Everything in understanding about the scourge that he received, more than likely they gave him 13 flat flags or flagging on his chest because that's how it was administered. His bowels, everything was mashed up. I wonder if you're hearing me. And then they, when they turned him around and they give him 27 on his back. He says that those who used to get that kind of punishment at 40, they die. So they had, they had moved the number down to 39. Because at 39, nobody was dying. They picked up at 40, they were dying. They wanted to kill my Savior in the court. But the thing was that he would be lifted up. Amen? That he would be lifted up. I'm saying today, are we willing? To really serve him. Just give him another try. Give him a give him prove him for two weeks. I beg and Joel. And Joel. Just prove him. Just say, you know what, Lord? Prove him. You know, many of our children in, in, in the church, you know, and I and I run this exercise. I said to my summer school one time, I said, Well then all of our children always um, you know, we come on in the time, they want to work at Burger King, McDonald's and and there, there, there are so many other big places to work, so many government offices. So I said to 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 um, everybody with the with the approval of the appearance, write me a letter that I will send to the governor, Governor Cole. That will put everybody either into some prestigious hospital around the area, some high-ranking government office even in your congressman office to work for the summer. I only received one letter. I know if I had said, everybody who wants to work at McDonald's give me a letter, I would have get about a dozen letters. Don't let the devil play with your mind. So are I. You are the child of God. He said he called you to be the head, not the tail. I'm preaching to Ibeck and Joel today. There is nothing that my God can't do. Nothing. There is nothing that my God can't do. And you can pull me up on the challenge when we come back from lunch. It's 1.30, almost 1.30 now. It is a divine law. Amen? It is a divine law that blessing comes at some cost to the receiver. God. He says, all heaven is watching with intense 
interest for every indi indication of the character they are forming. Meaning our youths. Whether when brought to the test, they will stand firmly for God and the right or be swayed by the worldly influences. For our young people and some of us who search the net, you go and look at the date of children that is dying at the age of 20. And you will never want to come out of your house if you believe the date. And that's go to the government and the government. And when they don't even know how some of them die, they do not know the causes. Don't know the causes. What kind of madness is this? Many of our children in our church have become homosexuals and lesbians. Did I say it right? Because I said it right. I think they take one of my video because they talk about homosexuals. But God is God. Amen? It's an abomination unto him. We must come to the understanding that there is an event to gain and an hell to shun. And he promises that he will feed us. He said that your bread and water will be short. You don't have to, you know, he will prepare for us. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. You go like, do like, don't do like what I do. Buy this big green box full of rice and flour and, and, and all of these so sugar and all of them something. But if our time come, I have a box. Mm -hmm. Madness! It's gonna turn worm. My wife was so smart. That she could count everything. <laughs> and then I, I was so silly. I wanted to watch the first with her. Then the scripture licked me and I stand back. Your bread and your water will be sure, Franklin. You don't have to do all that madness. Take it and go get somebody else if you have enough to put down. Mm -hmm. Amen. You, you can't say amen. You know. Mm -hmm. you, know? Mm -hmm. you can't say amen. God has a great work to be done yeah. in a short time. He has committed to the young. It's my name here, Brother Rich. I'm up here defending himself, Sister Pia, myself. We are not excluded. But the pen of inspiration helps us understand God has a great work to be done in a short time. He has committed to the young talents of intellect, time, and means. And he holds them responsible for the use they make of these good gifts. Amen. We are afraid of computer. Right, Sister P? Wow. It's so difficult. They have talents of intellect and they have the time. And they do not want to create a platform to, do, let me use the word, establish the Lord. But we want to, you know, the greatest, you want to make money? As a young man, the other day I see Ibeck put something on, on internet and within minutes he had over 800. Um, Hits. I'm like, why are you going viral? <laughs> you go there and you try to tell the world as a young person about justification by faith, which is not hard. Just tell the truth according to the scripture and you see how much hits you get within seconds of establishing it. It's free. God has a great work. Amen. He calls upon them to come to the front to resist the corrupting, bewitching influences of this fast age and to become qualified to labor in his cause. Amen. They cannot become fitted for usefulness without putting art and energy into the work of preparation. Yes, Give the Lord some time. Try him for two weeks. The Lord, in his great mercy, sent a most precious message to his people. Yes, God. The message was to bring more prominently before the world the uplifted Savior, the uplifted Savior, Jesus Christ. The sacrifice for the sins, the sins for the, the, the sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. It presented justification through faith in surety. I'm closing now. Amen. Let me talk about surety. We cannot say it is not sure because it brought forth evidence. 
it has a foundation of stability. And it is invariable, meaning it is unchanging. Amen? Amen. And so today as we close, let's turn, let's close with our scripture text. Hebrews 7 and verse 22. <coughs> evidence is there. We see the ratification, we see the confirmation, we see the certainty, and we see the foundation of stability. We have seen it. We have read it. Because the efficacy of Christ carries power. Because all power was given to him. He says, by so much was Jesus make, made a surety of a better testimony.